And then Raphael's like, all right, Rimuru, we need to cut you off. Your uh, poison nullification is back up to 100%. We need to cut you off. And she literally killed Rimuru's buzz. <laughs> Aloha, everybody. I am Lehua, and welcome to the Super Fina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on Twitch and TikTok at Lehua Super Fina. Today, we are going to do a review slash recap of that time I got reincarnated as a slime, season three, episode 59, Reconciliation and Agreement. As this takes a breather after the intense battles of the previous episode, we are focusing on the aftermath and setting the stage for future conflicts. With the seven days clergy purged and dust suddenly in, like literally, because they dis disintegrated so gracefully, <laughs> Rimuru and Hinata meet to discuss the future of their nations, and everybody's there. We got Luminous, we got the Crusaders, everyone. And this meeting is a welcome change of pace, offering an opportunity for these former adversaries to build a bridge of understanding. It's really nice to see how they're talking about all the misunderstandings that have been happening even before this season, like stuff that's been happening in the second season with how the Western Holy Nation, with Falmouth, when they invaded the Tempest, the Jura Tempest Federation. So it's really nice to have them actually talk about it and square everything away because I feel like in the beginning of the season, season three, they were talking about it, but nothing was clarified. So it's really refreshing to see this happening. Now, this episode doesn't shy away from dropping bombshells. <laughs> we learn the true masterminds behind the conflict, the Eastern merchants, specifically Clayman's old allies, Granville and Merrillville, the Rosals. We have been suspecting the Easter merchants for a long time. Yeah, like everywhere we, we saw in this season, we're like, Easter merchants, damn you. So it was really nice to see them say it, clarifies like Easter merchants. You know, they had their hands in everything. And Hinata talked about her experiences and how she was deceived. Now, with... The mastermind's failed attempt to manipulate Hinata and Rimuru adds another layer of complexity to the power struggles at play. Yeah. Luminous sheds light on the history of the Seven Days clergy and their connection with Clayman. We also discover that Granville, who was once a hero, was corrupted by his thirst for revenge. With this revelation, it adds a tragic dimension to the conflict. This part was also interesting because it kind of gave, it quantified more on what the Seven Days clergy were. And Granville was apparently Sunday. And so literally seven days, like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So <laughs> I thought that was interesting that there were actually days. And then we learned that the 70s clergy were trying to get rid of Hinata so they would get more favor from Luminous. And Luminous apparently shares love energy, which helps them like rejuvenate, keeps them alive, keeps them young, I guess. They kind of talked about that. And in my reaction, which I'll have uploaded on my Patreon with no editing, in my reaction, I talked about saying, yo, the 70s clergy are like trying to get rid of their little sister who has their mom's attention. <laughs> and Luminous is the mom. So that was interesting how they kind of explain more about Luminous because I was wondering about them. I was like, why are the 70s clergy doing this? Like I thought they were going against Luminous. They're being treacherous but no they they just wanted more of her love <laughs> that was a twist for me at least i was thinking something more sinister anyways then 
despite Luminous's future threat of punishing Vildora, a sense of peace prevails. Rimuru and Hinata forge an alliance, symbolized by the construction of a church in the Jura Tempest Federation. We also see Hinata receiving a new sword from Rimuru, a gesture of goodwill. This part is interesting because Rimuru proposes to have the Western Holy Church be a nation and to form an alliance with the Jura Tempest Federation, a hundred years of friendship. So I guess it's like a treaty, a pact. And he was, he's already doing this with the other nations too. So now they have another one to add on to that. And then they're going to work on Falmouth. So they're pretty much going to have an alliance with almost the whole Western part of this area, Western region, Western continent. I need to look at a map of this world and see how vast it is because literally we're focusing on the West. Yo, <laughs> because apparently there's a whole other thing going on in the East. Then in this episode, it delves into Damrata's storyline. He confronts Yuki, who we are like, okay, what's going on with Yuki? He was working with that older demon lord, demon lord Kamazu. Uh, how do you say his name? I'm really bad at names. But anyways, he was working with him. So Damrata from the East Merchant Group confronts Yuki, learning the truth about the Eastern merchant's involvement. This gets quantified even more. And as the Murata departs, we see Yuki, the true mastermind behind the scenes. He's behind everything. Again. Plotting his next move. Yes, this leaves us with a sense of unease. The threat may be subdued for now, but a more dangerous enemy lurks in the shadows. So there's like so much that was talked about in this episode. In the beginning of this episode, we see with Rosa Granville, we see Granville talking to Damrata and they're having kind of like a very civil fight where Granville's like, you betrayed us. And Damrata's like, well, you put us in jeopardy with Diablo. <laughs> so it seems like Damrata was in Falmouth while Granville was working with the seven days clergy because Granville is Sunday of the seven days clergy. So it's very interesting how he's still alive and everybody thinks he's dead, right? Because according to Nicholas, the one who's devoted to Hinata said uh, he used disintegration and eradicated Sunday. That's not true. It's Granville. He's a Rosal. And he has this granddaughter named Maribel who says Maribel of the greed. So we got those people. I don't know what their end goal is. It doesn't seem like Granville, Granville's goal is to receive love energy from Luminous. It seems like his goal is to have his revenge against Leon. And then Yuki is working with the former demon lord. Oh, what's his name? What 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 is that demon lord's name? <laughs> Jeez Louise. This is really bad. Let's see over here. Uh let me look over here. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to like look it up so I don't butcher this demon lord. Kazamil? I feel like it's Kagamil, their new name. Come on, you you got you gotta give me their names. Give me their names, please. Please. You gotta give me a list so I know who is who. Claimant, I know Frey, blah 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 blah. True demon lords, da 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 da. Oh my goodness, you guys aren't even going to give it to me? Okay, fine. Whatever. That's fine. Anyways, this demon lord wants still wants revenge against Leon, right? 
and they're working with Yuki. Yuki is working with him. And then we have Granville that wants revenge on Leon. So it seems like Yuki's end goal is to defeat Leon. And I'm assuming it's because of Shizu. Shizu was his master. And then Shizu was summoned by Leon. Then Leon fused Ifrit with Shizu, which resulted in her dying. So I'm assuming that's the end goal is to eliminate Leon. However, it's like, how? You know, the demon, the other demon lord, lord he couldn't defeat Leon. And Granville, as a hero, couldn't defeat Leon. Seems like Yuki can't. So it's like, what is his goal? And why is he working with the Eastern Merchant Group? Does he want to utilize Blanc, who's over there, which is a demon, who is supposedly as strong as Diablo? And Diablo's pretty OP, yo. So... I'm just wondering, like, how is all this connected? Like, what does Yuki need from the Eastern Merchant Group? Because it seems like they're working together. And the Eastern Merchant Group is kind of shady. Like, they talk about slaves. And it's like, is slaves legal where you are? <laughs> and But it's illegal in the West. Like, there's just so much going on. Then we got angels. Yeah. During the dinner party with Rimuru and the others that you see over here, there's like talk about angels and how they're going to approach and how they're gonna, they potentially may attack. And Rimuru's like, well, we'll be ready for them. And there's like so much going on. My whole focus towards the end of the episode was on Yuki because I'm like, what? conspiracy more revealed and i totally forgot about the angels and i forgot about the rosals and i think maribel the greed is an angel if she's not an angel i don't know what she is because she called herself the greed and that's like not very human like i want to say anyways besides all that story-wise this episode was good we got clarification during the meeting between uh luminous's group and rimuru's group we're having alliances made 100 year friendship then we got this dinner party that we have that we, we i guess learn that rimuru can kind of weaken his skill to be to nullify any poison which is alcohol he can get drunk he can get buzzed yo and he learned this from luminous <laughs> and in this scene we learn that actually not learn he actually revisits his whole plan of how he wants the Juro Tempest Federation to be recognized he wants peace he wants his Majin to be able to freely live their lives amongst other races and he's doing this by offering so many things to the world to add value to the Juro Tempest Federation so <clears throat> he is adding value to his products that he's trading with other nations. He's creating very safe trade routes by building the roads. And then he's also going to attack the whole communication because according to him or the knowledge of this world, communication can only be done through like these crystals and people who with who have magic are the only ones who could use it. And now he's trying to have this tool be used by everyone using his steel, his spider steel threads, I think it was, where anyone could use it. So that's like, whoa. And this whole time while he's drunk, sharing this with everybody, 
while I was reacting to this, I was like, are you allowed to talk about this? Is this something you want to share? Isn't this like top secrets that you want to like hold to yourself because you don't want anyone else to take these plans and do it before you? And it was confirmed after everybody learned all of this. He not just like, isn't this like state secrets? <laughs> And then Raphael is like, all right, Rimuru, we need to cut you off. Your uh, poison nullification is back up to 100%. We need to cut you off. And she literally killed Rimuru's buzz. <laughs> so that was funny. Is Raphael a she or he? We don't really know. It's ambiguous. We just call Raphael teacher, right? Anyways. So we got all of this. He's revealing his plans for the future. Awesome stuff going on. And then after that was revealed, then we learned about Yuki and his scheming ways with the Eastern merchants. And so while a lot of good stuff is happening, about to happen, a lot of bad stuff is about to happen too. And I kind of want to touch on something that really piqued my interest. So we got this... One of the Crusaders, oh gosh, I'm bad with names again. One of the Crusaders who fought Somme seems like she has a really hard crush on him. And I'm wondering what happened with their fight with each other. It's like, what did he do to make you so, what is that called? So enamored with him. Like, what happened? <laughs> like you guys just fought that right all you guys did was fight and he must have done something to win her heart and i'm just thinking about okay what about our um our illicit girl you know the one that's like a ninja what about her like yo she has a a rival a person that she needs to watch out for. However, so he just seems like he's like super oblivious to all this because all he cares about is serving his master, Rimuru. <laughs> and I feel like this is going to play as like a humorous thing later on in the future, maybe like for like a Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day special kind of thing. Because in this episode and the last episode, we got Vildora bringing in the humor with Luminous and him. And we can't use that every time to bring more humor. There has to be more things. So I'm totally predicting that we're going to have Selme and these two girls creating the comedy in future stories, future episodes, future scenes, all kind of future stuff. But yeah. Ooh, that was a lot of stuff we talked about. So although this episode is a slower pace, it serves an important purpose it offers closure on the recent conflict reveals the true villains and lays the groundwork for future storylines the ending leaves us with a sense of anticipation as we wait to see what yuki the ultimate puppet master has in store so what did you guys think about this episode what did you guys think about this review slash recap let me know in the comments and if you like this video don't forget to like it subscribe ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload and if you want to dive into more of anime and manga i host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime and manga we also interview people in the anime industry so you're interested in that link is in the description we're available on all platforms other than that my name is lahula and this is the superfina channel doing like a recap slash review of that time i got reincarnated as a slime season 3 episode 59 hope you guys like this video and we'll see you on the next one ah uh, hui ho